This is Bank Top. It's part of the Stafford Road from the junction with Selman Street and Lowfield Lane down to the junction with the High Street and Station Road. During the First World War, more than 50 men connected with the Nosel area were killed. In 1921, a parish hall was built as a living cenotaph to those who fell, and it was on land donated by the church at the junction of Lowfield Lane and the Stafford Road, and it was called the Memorial Institute. The building was an army hut from the Brockton camp, bought by George Woodfield, who had lost his son John during the First World War. Mrs Woodfield, seen here third from the left, opened the Memorial Institute on Saturday the 15th of October 1921. At the time of this picture, taken in 1923, a bowling green had been laid to one side of the Institute, in front of where the entrance is today, and tennis courts on the other side. The main road is seen on the right-hand side. The hall was well supported and was used for whist drives, billiards, bingo, old time and modern dances and a mobile cinema visited every Tuesday evening. Over the years, the wooden building fell into a state of disrepair and from 1954 onwards, the cost of maintenance exceeded the income. From 1949, plans were being prepared for a new building. In 1951, Additional land was given by Mr. Tompkinson from the manor farm opposite the hall, allowing an entrance hall and cloakrooms to be built. This was completed in 1952. Planning permission for a new hall was applied for and given in 1960, and grants were confirmed. In March 1960, the original hall was advertised for sale in three newspapers. It was sold two months later for £200 and included a billiard table. The new hall cost £5,200 and was supplied by Stafford Concrete Buildings and included the entrance hall and cloakrooms built in 1952. The new building was opened on Saturday the 8th of April 1961 by Mrs Shepherd Johnson. And this is the Memorial Village Hall today. The Nosel fire engine was kept at the Manor Farm at this location. When some residents in Audemore Road were made homeless through a fire, they moved into these premises and the fire engine was kept at the boat inn until being housed at the fire station in Wharf Road. In the early 1950s, two police houses were built at Bank Top and the police station moved here from Rose Villa adjacent to Stacey's Gardens on the Newport Road. They are now private houses. In 1930, Sidney Felton built and ran Banktop Garage at this location. Mr Griffin ran it in 1945, then Mr Cordell from 1947 to 1953. And this is the current view down Banktop looking towards the garage. And this is what the area looked like after the police houses were built. This is the garage now. And this is in 1953, when Mr and Mrs Hodgkinson took it over. Next to the garage was this small cottage. It was taken down some time ago. The property on the left on this picture is Banktop House, where Sidney Felton lived when he built the garage. It had been a farm, but was owned previously in 1901 by Henry Borgust, the parochial school head teacher and his wife, and in the late 1800s was itself used as a private school. But in the early 1800s it was a pub, and it was once called the Wagoner's Arms, and then later the Traveller's Rest. The property on the right is the Romping Cat, but was the Red Lion in the early 1800s. This picture, taken from the railway line, shows the rear of the two pubs. In 1829, the landlord of the Traveller's Rest provided free beer to a mob of nearly 100 men, providing they pulled down the Red Lion. 
The owner of the Red Lion locked the doors and shutters of the house, but the mob broke in. The publican was persuaded to provide eleven more gallons of beer, which pacified the crowd, though they smashed up all the crockery. And eventually, some hours later, the mob dispersed. The Red Lion is now known as the Romping Cat, and the Traveller's Rest is Bank Top House, both of them private houses. Notice also the Manor Farm in the background. This is a view looking up Bank Top from the Mini Island at the bottom of the High Street, and this is what it used to look like. This property was the Traveller's Rest, and this was the Red Lion, the name of the Romping Cat supposedly came about due to a badly painted pub sign which looked more like a cat than a lion. And this is the pub from the rear, with Mr and Mrs Harry Anser, who were there in 1932 and 1940. The property was called Heathfield at that time. 